an introduction to Joshua. Who? As we said when we looked at the book of Deuteronomy, Joshua is one of the books of the Hebrew scriptures attributed to the Deuteronomist or the Deuteronomistic historian. The story told by the book picks up where Deuteronomy left off with Moses having died and passed on leadership of the people of Israel to Joshua. The main body of the text then deals with the conquest and settlement of Canaan. Now the conquest of, of Canaan has been foreshadowed and trailed already going back as far as the account of Noah in Genesis. If we remember back to that strange story when Noah exited the ark and planted a vineyard, the first seeds of Canaan's role as the bad guy in this epic were revealed. Noah got drunk and one of his sons was cursed for observing him in his nakedness under the vines. That son became the father of the nation of Canaan and in the book of Joshua the curse began with the Noah story as going to play itself out. You may also recall that in Deuteronomy the Israelites were told to be pretty ruthless to the inhabitants of the land that they were about to conquer. They were told to wipe out all places of worship and all the people too. Now this appears to be a, a quite a specific injunction against the Canaanites. So when we read Joshua we can expect some bloodshed and some nastiness. When? The Deuteronomist was not writing in the time of Joshua or of the tribal society which he describes. And the archaeological record shows that the type of invasion described by the book is unlikely to have taken place. There is evidence of tribal warfare but not of an invading force coming in from the outside and conquering everyone. As well as archaeology telling us a slightly different story to Joshua, the book itself along with the book of Judges contradicts, it, contradicts its own picture of a whole-scale triumph. We're told that the Canaanites are destroyed and yet in various of the later stories they appear again, they've not been completely wiped out. This suggests that the author of the book was writing in and from a different historical context than the one that he describes. As the Deuteronomistic history unfolds it gets closer to the story told by the archaeological record. The likely date of its final composition is towards the end of the monarchical period and probably during the exile in Babylon in the 6th century BC. Of course I've said this is the date of its final composition and the history is a text which uses a variety of sources drawn from different time periods in Israel's story. The reforms of Hezekiah and Josiah are significant periods from which these sources are drawn and that places some of the material earlier than the 6th century during the reign of Hezekiah 200 years earlier. Why? The Deuteronomist is looking to make three key points. First, as we've already discussed, he wants to provide reasons for the exile. The blessings and curses at the end of Deuteronomy give us the reasons for the plight of the Israelites in Babylon. Secondly, the Deuteronomist wants to promote the idea of a united Israel. Joshua from the tribe of Ephraim represents a people who are together because significantly the Ephraimites were one of the tribes that broke away from the Davidic monarchs. Here we find him fighting for a united state. So the writer is making a political point uh, using, using a sort of ironic method which addresses the concerns of his own time rather than those of the period he's describing. The third point being made by the Deuteronomist concerns the Davidic line. David is being set up as the ideal king whose family are going to rule over the United State described in Joshua. David's not introduced in this book and will only be introduced later but the Deuteronomistic history is pointing towards him and towards those of his successors Hezekiah and Josiah particularly who want to reunite the tribes in a single nation. 